Hello and welcome everyone. I hope you're enjoying your Planet IMEX October edition experience so far. My name is Richard Orchard, the Senior Sales Manager at IMEX, and I will be your moderator for today's session. In the current world, things can seem a little scary and you can be unsure about what you can do next. Today's session will teach you that you can control a lot more than what you thought and will leave you with a positive mind frame on how you can reset and refocus your energy for you and your career. But first of all, just a little bit of housekeeping for you. Please do use the chat as much as you'd like. Uh, but if you have any questions, please use the Slido feature that you'll, you'll see uh, next to the session. Uh, the session will run for around 25 minutes and then we'll have uh, five to seven minutes at the end for um, some Q&A. So please do ask your questions throughout the session. Uh, so now I'd like to introduce you to our wonderful speaker today. Uh, Robert Kenwood is the Chief Talent Officer for USearch and Select, the event and experiential recruitment specialist. But Robert is not just a recruiter and is fully emerged within the meetings and events industry, currently serving as a judge for the MIA, as a mentor for the Fast Forward 15 program, and is on the board of uh, ALIA. So now I'd like to welcome you, Robert Kenwood. Hello. Hi, Richard. How are you? All good, thanks. How are you today? Yeah, well, I think you've uh, oversold me already. You called me wonderful, so thanks for that. I'll uh, yeah. I'll take that any day. <laughs> right, no, definitely from from our chats beforehand, getting ready for the session. Uh, no, it's been great. So I know we're in in store for a great session today. Yeah, I hope so. And just a quick one: I'm not a fast forward mentor. I help with the education. I can almost hear oh, face sharp running towards my door, <laughs> kicking my heart. I'll just clear that up. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, it's all right. So, thank you very much for for obviously seeing me. The the session that we're talking about today, the title is "How to Move Forward After Coming to a Standstill." I think, as some of you know, I've been doing a lot of one-to-one uh, -one initiatives and community work and having spoken to an awful lot of people in the sector, as well as agency owners and stakeholders, it's very clear that we're facing quite a crisis in the sector. Um, a lot of people that I'm speaking with are having issues about what to do next in the situation. So what we're going to do today is help you focus on what you can do rather than what you can't. We'll be using mind mapping to sort of get, get out of your own way, as it's called, and sort of get away from the negativity. And I'll also talk you through sort of the new short term and medium career planning to really sort of try and put you at ease. So just a little bit, as you sort of mentioned, I won't go into too much detail, but the one thing I will say about advice is to take everything with a pinch of salt because everybody's different. So every piece of advice you get, the bottom line is, you know yourself better than anyone else and trust your gut when you go with it. So this is just for 20 years of me doing this, giving you some advice and guidance, but of course, take on board whatever you want and use it. Hopefully, it will be of use. So what we'll be looking at, first of all, is how to refocus. We're going to be understanding about how to sort of understand where your head's at and then planning on moving forward. Now, without laboring the point, unfortunately, as you know, we're facing one of the biggest crises our sector ever has had and hopefully ever will have. And obviously, the situation looks quite bleak. Um, there is, however, a lot more that people can control and they think they can because we're all put in a situation where this isn't something we've asked for or something that we've deserved. This is something that's happened to us. And that's a very special thing to think about. This has happened to us. We'll be looking at resetting and refocusing and channeling your energy just in a way that is more of a positive outcome and something that can help you rather than hinder. And we'll be looking at how you can work on yourself which at the moment is not just as important as a career, but some ways actually more important. So learning point one, what can you do? Now, some of the figures we've seen recently are our industry is currently wanting at something like one to five percent capacity. Now, that is that is scary numbers and scary things to think about. The first thing I would advise people to do and it's very captain mannering and it's easy for me to say, but it's to not panic. This is a situation that we can't control. And something I talk about a lot with my one-to-ones is that something you can't control, don't let it control you. It's a very important thing to realize that you're not on your own. We're all in the same situation. And one of the key things to think about is focus that this isn't personal. This is something that's happened. It's happened to you rather than because of you. And that's something you can control. And there's very few things we can look at at the moment to focus on. So that's one of them. Some of the areas I've been talking to people about what you can get involved, what can use your time. Now, as event professionals, you know, the work ethic of event professionals is second to none. 
However, this work ethic in some ways works against event professionals when there is no work. Everybody's used to you know, putting everything into the day and moving forward. And unfortunately, when there's not a lot to do, that can lead to some quite negative thoughts getting in. And what we'll be looking at is how to help out with that. Now, the first thing I would look at is to network. Now, when I mean network, I don't mean, you know, <laughs> well, actually, we can't do face to face, but it isn't networking just for career. It's networking for your own mental health. There's more people online now than I've ever seen people online. I looked at some figures recently, the hashtag event profs, for example, pre-COVID, there were 17,000 people following that hashtag. I've noticed now it's over 30,000. So there's over 30,000 people in the same situation you are, Just that's just on LinkedIn on that hashtag, looking at sharing content, networking, and staying involved. So one of the things networking also helps, it can lead to work, but I'm a big fan of not thinking about the big win at the end, because that's what we're working towards. I'm a fan about thinking about small wins. So small wins for me with networking is, reconnecting with maybe old employers or old contacts or old suppliers. Understanding when you speak to these people, the empathy levels, you need to realize you don't know the situation they're in, but when you're networking and re-engaging with old, with old contacts, it's thinking about putting yourself on their radar. Now, when you put yourself on someone's radar, one of the key things to understand is explain how you can add value. So if you're networking with old contacts, they might have a preconceived idea of what it was you did, which might change, or might have changed, sorry, or more importantly, it's about understanding what you want them to say about you. That's what networking is, not selling to the person, but giving them information to understand how they can talk about you and network on your behalf. So more people have than ever are interacting, more people are online. And one of the great things about online, well, I think it's one of the great things is you can debate. Now, you can debate, you can share knowledge. Um, this is a time for you to learn with that knowledge. There's more you know, issues like this. There's more webinars, there's more tools online, there's more groups and events that have ever been, and there's lots of information taking place. Now, it's not just information, it's, it's knowledge sharing. It can help you with your career. But a lot of this session is about trying to focus on the three areas of health I'm really focused on at the moment, which is my mental health, my physical health, and my financial health. And they're three key things that if you're focusing on them, the rest will actually come around. Now, the other thing as well is a lot of you, um, myself included, before I set my business up, you're probably used to being in an office full of people and engaging even on the commute that we always to hate, but now we probably miss. This is a time to not be on your own to try to use your network and to engage with your network and try to ensure that that environment, you're never going to recreate that. But a lot of you, you know, are either sat on a, a laptop in your kitchen or you're in the spare room or if you're lucky and have an office, it's very lonely and it's very difficult to get out of that lonely place because we have been pre-programmed to think that asking for help is actually a negative. It's not. It's actually a sign of strength. And it's something I really believe in is talking and engaging. And I'll talk to you about my own personal journey. And hopefully, by me talking to you about my own personal journey, you'll be able to look at how that fits with you and sort of fill some places in. The other thing I would really sort of um, be keen to understand about network and engage learn is about your personal network. And we talk about this in mind mapping, but it's really important to me personally, and I hope it is to you, to understand that your friends and your family, and in my case, my wife, they are there as your partner and support, but they will never understand the situation like you and I do. They will never feel the stresses, the pains, um, the ups and the downs like you and I do. And the reason for that is because they are your wife or husband or partner, or whatever, first, and secondly comes, you know, the nice stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't say that. It makes it sound like I've said my wife's not nice, but you know what I mean. And I, guess I have the problem. With, I have the problem. With my uh, my other half is uh, in the events world as well, so we go and have to, have to stress both both sides. Um, but can I just ask, when you say network and engage, could it just be as simple as um, just commenting on a LinkedIn post, and is it as simple yeah. as that? I think one of one of the things about networking is people worry that there's an end to it, whereas actually for me it's about just staying relevant, staying pertinent, staying visible. If you see one of your connections or you don't even have to actually know them Richard but if you're seeing pieces of work commenting on that not just is good for you because it's almost like you're getting some of your voice and thoughts out there it's also seen by other people so for example and I'm sure you've all seen people like Martin Fuller who's doing amazing work for the sector you know I will always hunt out Martin's work even though it's always in my feed 
I will always look at what he's doing, not just because of the content he's putting out there, but actually the engagement he gets, I actually get into really good networking conversations off the back of that content. Because what you've got to remember is if you're looking for, say, event profs hashtag or exponential marketing or whatever, there are like-minded people there. This isn't like going to a, a bar and having a chat with people networking. This is very targeted people who've taken the time to actually interact and engage. So, yeah, it's as simple as posting or sharing, you know, and don't be afraid to reach out and connect with people that maybe before you would have thought wouldn't be interested in connecting. What I would say, Richard, on, on connecting with people and posting is, again, think of the, per, you know, the the human nature. You, I wouldn't just run up to you in the street, Richard, and jump on your back and say, hey, I'm Robert. Yeah. You know, it's the same as online. You know, yeah. now we sort of met, as it were. But if I'd never met you before, I would have said, you know, I've seen Richard, some of the work you're doing. I'd like to connect for future networking opportunities. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I always find the personal sort of uh, posts and messages always get much better traction than sort of the normal, just here's my work, uh, this is what I'm doing at work. If it's something a little bit more personal, that's what actually gets the traction and the most uh, likes and views and interactions. So, yeah, I think that person putting your own personality into it is very important. Yeah, and I think it also, it's it's okay to not be okay. And I love that phrase. I've seen that around. Um, the other thing, and we'll talk about FOMO and, and seeing people, is you've also got to take online with a pinch of salt. You know, you have you have to understand what social media is there for. Um, so engage. And, and again, we'll talk about this later. So I keep saying we'll talk about this later. <laughs> the other thing about networking and engaging is learning is don't do this eight hours a day. You know, please, God, don't don't sit eight hours a day trying to do this because, you know, this is a once, hopefully, once in a lifetime situation. And you can do all of this, you know, two or three hours a day and then take the time for yourself. You know, whatever that whatever that time is. Okay, so talking of sort of networking, we do go into a bit more, which is why I was a bit vague with my answer to you, Richard. <laughs> but <laughs> I think one of the real key things to think about when you're online, and this is all focusing on what you can do, what you can control is you can control how the world sees you. Now that's both a positive, positive and a negative. If you're reading everybody else's post, you might think, oh, they're having a wonderful time, but actually behind the scenes, you might not know what's going on. But what you can control, control is how the world sees you. And more importantly, the great thing about networking and engaging is, again, you can control what people say about you. And this is the same as if you're applying for a job as it is with networking. You're not thinking about that immediacy. You're thinking about the legacy. What would someone say afterwards if they'd met you? And that is the key thing to think about all your interactions. And the other thing about interactions, and I've been guilty of this, um, there's that phrase like don't drink and dial. You've probably heard of that. Um, I'm the same with like don't drink and type. But also what you've got to remember about interactions is whether or not people engage on your content, people will see what you're putting online. So I'm not saying don't be yourself. I'm just saying you have to make a stand. So, for example, me, my brand is who I am. I'm very clear about my brand guidelines and what I project out there. And I know that some people won't like my approach. That's the decision I've made. But I'm true to that because that's who I am. So I've had many, many people speak to me saying, I've seen your stuff on LinkedIn. I've seen your stuff on Twitter. And I didn't even know they'd seen my stuff. So everything that you're posting is out there in the public um, domain. And that's a good thing. But on the flip side of that, you have to be really careful with what you're doing and that sort of person you are saying you are. Um, and that's a real clear thing for me. Robert, do you think that sort of personal and professional sort of LinkedIn or social media has gone now where some people will keep Facebook for personal and LinkedIn for professional is it kind of blurred lines that you should just sort of put that professional and front on at all times I, I think it's I, I think it's different someone like yourself Richard who does this sort of work and someone who myself would would try to do you know b2b sales direct to a to a brand or an agency you know people are buying my business 50 percent because of me 50 percent because of my product um, it's very easy for me, therefore, to say my brand is myself and have that consistent message. I think people online, you know, I'm not telling people what to do, but I think you still should have that sort of if you are wanting to be an employee, for example, you know, LinkedIn is a professional site. Now, I hate the fact that there's LinkedIn police that tell you what you can and can't follow. And when I mean LinkedIn police, I don't mean actual LinkedIn. I mean, people on there that try to monitor it. I'm a big fan of and we talked about swearing and I don't swear on LinkedIn, but I'm very close to the bone, shall we say. Um, so for somebody that's an employee um, and isn't, you know, their own business, then you do need to realise that, yes, LinkedIn 
is a professional site and there is a certain standard expected on that but also the same for and i've seen this with with recruiters and hiring teams you know people looking at your facebook your twitter your instagram your t you know unfortunately and this is pre-covid you know people looking at your social and using that as selection personally i'm not a fan of that i think that's terrible um, but people do. So for me, if I was an employee rather than a business, yes, I would take care of the site I'm on. Um, you won't see me posting you know, pictures of my partner or my kids on LinkedIn, for example, but I might on Facebook and I might on Instagram and on Twitter. Well, obviously, Twitter is just where everyone goes to argue. So you can do what you want on Twitter. <laughs> um, now, what, what else you can do at the moment is the CV. Now, CV, the dreaded CV, my advice to people on what you can do during this time if you haven't done your CV in the last year, even maybe two years, is I would do your CV again. I would start your CV from scratch. And the reason I say that is CVs end up becoming something that is just a list of things you've done and it becomes a, a live document, which is great. But now what you can focus on is talking about how people see you and how you want people to talk about you is your CV needs to be a marketing document. Your CV and LinkedIn is not going to get you a job. It's going to get you an interview and getting an interview will get you the job. So now is the time to look at your CV, look at your LinkedIn profile and, and ask your family and friends and partners. This is the time you can speak to them and ask them not. Is this any good? Because number one, unless they're maybe my wife would tell me it was shit. Uh, sorry. <laughs> That's swear word. Sorry. In the job. Uh, my wife, who's an HRD, would tell me if something was terrible, but she's qualified to do so. Most of our friends and family are going to tell you it's good because you want to hear that. And those that say it's bad, their opinion doesn't actually matter because the opinion you need to matter is the person that's reading it to give you the interview. Now, what you can use your friends and family for, and this is a great piece of advice, is give them your CV and ask them, what are the three things that you guys are talking about? What, uh, sorry, thinking about, you know, what is it that you think actually now you've read my CV? So that's quite important sort of advice. So I've just seen what I've Right, okay. I'm only about halfway through these slides, Richard. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> because if, if anyone has any questions, then please add um, add them into the Slido, and then I can ask them as we go along if they're relevant at, at that time. Uh, we don't yeah. have to use the Q and A at the end for you can keep it going. Okay. Okay. So we'll move on to learning point two. So so mind mapping itself. Now, just to be clear, mind mapping is a very professional, very well you know, very well versed. Um, consultancy service it's all about visualizing and getting out of what's in your head into sort of key concepts using images i'm not going to do full mind mapping because that that is a whole session but what i'm going to do is help you just work out how you get out of what's in your head how you can organize it and how you can really understand what are you good at and what you enjoy so instead of thinking about the jobs you're going for or what's out there if you start thinking about what you're good at and what you enjoy then the pool of what you actually can do becomes smaller. And when the pool of what you can do comes smaller, you'll get more small wins because you're not wasting your time with all those tire kicker applications. And trust me, you don't want to be wasting your time because you will still get that emotional roller coaster, even though it's something you didn't want to do in the first place. So some of the things about what's going on inside your head, and this links to what we said earlier. There's a real, and you've seen it at the moment, lots of people posting in events that they've got new jobs. Now that's wonderful. You know, it's absolutely wonderful to see people getting jobs. But just remember, no one's going to post online that they feel like shit today. No one's going to post online that they don't want to get out of the pyjamas and they've cracked open a glass of a bottle of wine at 11 o'clock in the morning because they wouldn't do that. So just understand that sort of fear of missing out. It is a real thing. There is it's the likelihood is you feel alone. The likelihood is you feel you're being left behind or that you feel everybody else is being successful and you're not. So what I would say to you about thinking about what's inside your head is think before you think. So before you come to these conclusions, before you then start acting on them, try to understand why you're feeling that way and where that's coming from. And very quickly, you'll understand, again, that pinch of salt with social. Now, obviously, you know, it's great to you know say you've got a new job and, and praise other people for saying and we talked about engaging. Nothing better than engaging on a positive post because that will get you lots of traction as well. But going back to what we said is. You can't control what's going on in the world, especially in events. You know, look, we we depend on global travel and large gatherings of people. You know, we're going to be the last out of this. And that's not negative. That's about being pragmatic and planning. And when you start thinking about pragmatism, you can start thinking about what you're going to do each day and how you're going to move forward. And that is one of the few things we can control is your own actions. So 
This is something I'm a huge fan of. You probably everybody knows about the seven stages of grief, but I'm a fan of the five stages, of the original. I won't go into as much detail as it was because I've noticed the timings, but this I found incredibly useful for me personally when I was going through the situation that probably a lot of event professionals are going through now. As a recruiter, back in sort of December, January, this is when I had the feelings that quite a lot of people are going through now because obviously there's no furlough scheme or anything for myself. So a lot of people are probably getting at this. And I found it really important to understand it's very natural to feel certain ways. I'm a great fan, not of labels, but of understanding that it's okay to feel a certain way. It's not a problem because remember, I don't have that support network that maybe you would have had before. So back in December, January, when we first heard about this, you know, that it was coming out, you're in denial stage, it's not going to happen to us, it won't affect us, and you just ignored it. Right? This is me personally and hoping people sort of can link. February, March stage, my pipeline vanished. I had five or six people, new assignments. I had my half my year's projections done in one month, and that was taken away from me. And that side of thing made me more angry than I ever have been um, at any time of my career. And by looking at the five stages of grief, it made me realize I have to go through this stage to get to the next stage. And that's really important to understand. And it's not about just getting through it. It's about letting it be part of you and learning how to cope with it. So May, June, um, to be honest, I went through two stages, two, three and four all at the same time. Um, I had some absolutely terrible weeks. Um, I wouldn't say I was in full depression, but I was definitely depressed for certain periods of time. And for me, we talked about engagement networking, my event network, I'm very open and honest about what I put out there. And my network um, actually really helped me. My event professional community really rallied around me and supported me, not just, you know, directly, but by being involved. And as we said a few slides earlier, Richard, just being part of the community made me feel like I was still actually in it and still, you know, relevant, pertinent, all the words we talked about earlier. I got to what's called acceptance in June. Quite quickly, it was obvious for me that the event sector, as we know it, will not get back to how we want it to unless there's a medicine or a vaccine. I've got a date in my diary for December. Um, we find out about all the trials this year. So I put a date in my diary and said, why am I looking at something I can't control? In December is when I need to make a decision on what I'm going to do with the, in the industry as in events. So that for me was acceptance. I then looked at other options, other plans, other business ventures, and I focused on what I can do. Yeah, yeah we just had a question come through on that, actually, uh, that um, as it sort of keeps going on, we had the hope of the October the 1st, and then it's moved uh, to we don't know when. Could you go, uh, could it be possible for someone to go back to the stages? They've accepted it, but now I'm back at number two again, and then work their way through it. Uh, absolutely, 100%. That's a, it's a wonderful point, and I think, I'm I'm a bit more probably pragmatic than the, the usual event professional because I looked at it that medicine or vaccine, we won't get back to anything like we want to until 2022. That's when we'll be all like everything's reasonably back to normal and we can, you know, we're all loving life again. What that means though next year is there'll be lots of recruitment, there'll be lots of agencies scaling up, there'll be lots of bit uh, work coming out, you know, that that is the positive side of things. So I've never, re I mean, look, this is a personal thing and I told you about how I am. Anything that comes out of that man's mouth, I've never believed anyway. So, <laughs> and and we cannot control it. They can say whatever date they want to say, unless there's a medicine or a vaccine, it's not gonna change. And, you know, as we've seen on Monday, there could be a second wave. On Monday, we could be told that this will all be over and we'll all be vaccinated in six months. There's no point for me worrying about stuff that's not to be something you can't control, but you're absolutely right. Yes, you can lapse backwards as long as I found it quite useful to understand rather than be concerned about. I, I, I understood that I'd lapse backwards and worked on then moving forward again. Okay. And that's where this this is where you move into mind mapping. We talked about visual representation. So my uh, I won't go. I won't talk as much about this slide as I was because I realize I'm, I'm gathering for time. But very much about um, mind mapping with this positivity slide is about positive mental uh, positive mental attitude. Now, look, I know that's that can sound a bit wanky, Richard, and I get that. Um, but for me, it was about looking at a change of mindset. So if we pick a few things out, so on the left is how possibly you would be feeling before acceptance and getting to acceptance. And on the right is about moving forward and understanding you know, where you're at. So, for example, um, looking at things like uh, finding an excuse for failure. 
you know, whose fault is this? I've worked so hard. Um, this isn't fair. Um, this isn't right. Why won't they let us work? All valid thoughts to have. But when you think about it from that can hold you back. You have to let go of that mindset at some point, because unless you're going to run for prime minister or unless you're going to suddenly become a, you know, um, a genealogy specialist and make a vaccine, it's out of our control. So what I what I looked at is to learn from it. Now, you talk there about the 1st of October. That is a great example about learning something. I heard back in February, March, everyone talking, it will be all right Q3, it will be all right Q4. So what happens is everybody gets positive, everybody starts planning, and then when it was taken away from us, you're right back down to the beginning. So instead of thinking about that, it's I'd like to say it's um, a very clever um, quote, but I think it's a Jack Reach quote. <laughs> and I think it talks about planning, planning for the worst and hoping for the best. And that's how I've really sort of looked at my business and about understanding things. So, for example, number two, it may be possible, but if it's difficult. So we talked earlier about um, uh, financial, physical and mental health. The financial health is huge. You know, I, I was in a situation I have no furlough, no support. I was in a situation of I am not going to earn an income this year. Can I get to the end of this year when I can make the decision about keeping the business open next year? I had a house deposit that I, I I've just got into and I use my savings. That was my positive decision saying, this is gonna be difficult. I don't wanna do this. My rainy day fund, which was my thunder and lightning fund in the end, I don't wanna do that. It's gonna be difficult, but look, it's possible. So it's more about taking the same thought process and thinking about how I can move this forward. And it is about your attitude. And look, I'm not a professional you know, life coach or guru or anything, but these are things coming from someone that's lived them. And if some dummy like me can go through this, and I'm sure you guys can go through this. Yeah. Now, this is something that I think we can all really look at. This is about understanding. Again, this is mind mapping. It's visual representation about trying to look at a bigger picture, breaking down things from more of a holistic point of view. Because if you look at just sort of snapshots, so say physical environment, and we, we touched on this earlier, you know, people working from the sofa, people working from a desk in a kitchen, you can control your physical environment, you can control what's around you. And that's quite important about things that you can do. And this goes back to that small win things. We all end up with a to do list that's about 20 long, whereas I'm, I'm a great fan of picking off some easy to do's early days. You know, first thing in the morning, there's a couple of quick wins, I feel very happy, let's move on rather than wait for, you know, that list to build up. So you can look at your physical environment, you can think about the atmosphere you, know, you can think about working from a, a shared space or you know all the other options you can do that is something you can control I think, my big, I think my biggest win was bringing the, my office chair back with home with me so i've got somewhere comfortable to sit for the like, last absolutely. few months yeah absolutely i'll tell you what the biggest thing i did is i bought um, you, i know we joked about it earlier i bought myself a standing desk yeah and, and a standing desk has been fantastic for me uh, if not, I can at least do that joke about walking downstairs. Well, I don't know. Yeah, we have those. In the, we have those in the office, actually. Those standards. So a lot of people have suffered not having those because they've got yeah, used, to, used to it. Yeah. You know, and you don't have to. I think I spent 200, 250 pounds, which is yeah, it's a lot of money, but you can spend a lot more. Um, so again, looking at the bigger picture, looking at your career. Now, I know Rishi has said that we should all retrain as cyber or whatever it is he wants us to do, but it's actually about thinking are there other options within where you are now? So I, for example, have set up a freelance service, never done freelance, always stayed away from it. Um, it became very natural as this pandemic got, wide, uh, got longer and with my ethical recruitment approach, it actually became apparent that I do have options that I maybe didn't think I did. And I only got to that stage by talking about positive thinking, but also looking at it from a more holistic point of view, rather than being in it, looking at it on it. Um, we talked about money earlier. You know, now look, financial health, you, you've got to do what you've got to do legally, legally. Um, you know, whether that's signing on um, for benefits, whether that's working in Tesco, Asda, and, you know, that's not saying anything negative about that. I had a, a chat with someone the other week and she's now lorry driving for her brother. I mean, that's fantastic, you know, but that's something that she's decided to do for that monetary element because we're all in different positions. Now, health is a big thing. You know, and this is looking at everything you can look at. This is mind mapping. Um, I've always been a kayaker for those of me you who know, you, you follow me. Um, me and my five year old are huge kayakers. You know, we've been out kayaking. We've got a paddleboard now. I'm out on the water as much as I can. That's fantastic for not just physical health, but mental health. I know gyms are closed and we've probably all got um, I've got a dumbbell and a kettlebell in the, in the shed. Like I think I've used three times. 
Um, but it's there. I can use it if I want to. We also looked at, you know, fun and recreation. There is still things to do, whether that's as simple as going for a walk at lunchtime. Um, I, I drop my son off in the morning. That's actually become my commute in the morning. And I forgot how much I missed that. You know, it's in, you know, just going out for a 20 minute round trip plus a coffee that actually breaks up the day. That actually makes me feel a bit, a uh, bit more positive. Um, and again, we talked about friends and family. And one of the key things about friends and family is to understand where to separate that. There needs to be separation between friends, family and what's going on. Now, I don't mean completely, you know, lock yourself in a corner, but I mean, look at separating and therefore asking for help because that's a, that's a big change. Um, and also, it's a, for me, it's about reconnecting with different parts of your life. You know, so from the sort of health side of things, you know, yeah, I had let myself go a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm still about stone overweight now, as it were. But getting back on the kayak, I've started running again. I've started playing six aside football, which if you've ever seen a fat 44 year old run around a football pitch, you'll know it's very hard. Um, but I've been doing that. And, and in a way, it's forced me to do that because I've thought about what can I do? And that's where we've got to. Yeah, I've been similar. I've, I always go for a run every lunchtime. And I think my saving grace at the moment is my, my Sunday league football team that we can still train and, and play on a play on a Sunday. So it's just, I think getting outside and into nature is, is, is very beneficial for you. Yeah, I mean, um, my wife will kill me for not remembering this, but there's an, an actual Japanese phrase for uh, walking out in the countryside. And it's something like tree air or, or something like forest air or something. You know, there's studies proven that just being outside looking at trees will actually improve your your own physical well-being. You know, that's trees, man. You know, just get out and yeah. see some trees. <laughs> <laughs> we are all near trees. You know, we can do that. Yeah. Um, and I'd also say about personal growth. And it's interesting that we're all on this journey and you're not you're not alone. It is, it is important to understand that others are going through it, too. And for me, um, one of the key sort of personal growth areas for me is being I've, I've actually developed an uh, empathy which for those of you that know me personally, um, my whole working career, I was told I was an inspirational leader, but a terrible manager. Um, lots of sympathy, no empathy. But during this period, I've realized that empathy isn't a weakness for me. Empathy isn't something I should use, you know, for a business. And having empathy actually makes me feel better. You know, being empathetic, but understanding there's a line, you can't take on everybody's problems. And as we talked about, that's where I've done these one-to-ones. I think I've done nearly 250 of these one-to-ones now since May. Um, and that's an emotional drain for me. But for me, I found that really beneficial. It's helped me understand, focus on what I can do, not what I can't. I'm very lucky to have the background I do and the experience I have. So why can't I help others with that? And that empathy streak has really, really helped me. Um, have we got five minutes or are we just checking for questions? Yeah, uh, five minutes ago. I'm asking the questions as we've been going through, so we, you can carry on with the slides for. Uh, we've got five minutes to go. Cool. Okay. So uh, smoothly moving into it. So what we can do about moving forward, and this is this is about understanding that look, moving forward doesn't mean carpe diem all the time. It's not about seizing the day and jumping up at the crack of dawn, five a.m. or whatever you want to do. Everybody's got their own way of dealing with things and their own way of moving forward. And that's absolutely fine. You do you. And some days, do you know what? It is OK to move from the sofa down to, uh, sorry, move from the bed down to the sofa and watch Netflix all day. Now, don't do that every day and don't make that seven days a week, because trust me, that's a dark path to lead down. However, moving forward, it's about thinking that, you know, paraphrasing the Martin Luther King moving forward, that if you move forward an inch, or a mile that's moving forward and we have to move forward this will be over this is a finite period of time we don't know what that time scale is but we know it will be over and to trust from someone that's been doing this for a while and speaking to lots of people the appetite for live and experiences is bigger than it's ever been before there will be a sooner oh, wrong word there will be a huge tidal wave of people wanting to go and do stuff and we need to be there for them and we will all forget how they've treated us and, and we know and we understand that we've been left behind or forgotten um but we do need to move forward my wife and i for example i think the last time i went to a festival was i think like oasis were headlining it was mid 90s or something you know we're talking about going to best of all next year you know we want to get out we want to see music the experience will be there and we need to be there for people and remember people are starting to look 
I'm starting to get conversations a lot more now, mainly freelance, to be to be fair. The freelance market will be very buoyant for the next three to six months. So if you're a freelancer, my advice is get yourself as a limited company. Um, my advice is get yourself out there as a specialist about what you do, but you can move forward because as we said, or I thought, 2022 is when we will look back and be like, do you remember 21 and 20? 2022 is when it will be over, finished, and the numbers are great again. Next year will be about building to the back end of that year. So next year, you know, will we be having 15,000 or 150,000 people at Glastonbury next year? Towards the end, if we have the medicines and vaccines, yes. Now, what that means is the positivity of that is the next three to six months are hard. Actually, I think I'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, sorry, I'll go into that now. Sorry. This is about thinking about that, that time span. So short, long, medium, long term career planning used to be a year, three years, five years. It's now three to six months, six to nine months and 12 months plus. So realistically, for the next three to six months, it's focusing on mental, physical, financial health, understanding whether you like it or not. The industry that we love is not going to be there for the next three to six months. We're moving into that six to nine months, staying relevant, staying visible, existential career crisis. We can put off until we know further because, again, control what you can control. And I know it's a very weird quote to, uh, <laughs> to basically end with, but it's unusual. But I like this because, look, this is this guy, uh, Francis of Assisi, is born in 1181 to 1226. And even he's a positive chap, and I wouldn't want to live in the 1100s. That sounds like an awful time. But <laughs> what he's looking at there is that sort of philosophy of small wins, that philosophy of taking time for yourself, one to three hours a day is absolutely fine. Don't flog a dead horse. Don't work yourself. Don't, don't look for a job is a job. Speak to your network, call in favours, put yourself on the radar, and take time for yourself, but keep moving forward. That's my advice. So that's Perfect. the presentation. I'm hoping I was good for time. What I would say is, yes, ask me anything, but also I mentioned the one-to-one, -one, you know, happy to put a link up or um, IMEX will put a link round. You can book into my diary for a 30 minute session with me. You can tell that I'm quite direct. So that, that's, I had somebody uh, leave me a testimonial saying, don't let your Nana hear Rob's feedback. And I thought that was wonderful. Um, <laughs> And we'll circulate that. And on my website, there's CV templates, there's webinars on video interviewing, and there's webinars on LinkedIn profile. So I'm practicing what I preach and help yourself. It's all free. Go and help yourself to it. Perfect. No, thanks, Robert. Thank, thanks so much. I know we've got some comments already coming through that people have enjoyed the session. I know I'm feeling a lot more, more positive and it's just putting yourself in that uh, right frame of mind, isn't it? And like you say, moving forward rather than than looking backwards. So uh, thanks, uh, thanks again. Yes, we'll we'll definitely put out there that you um, on your website usas.co.uk that you can book free consultations for some recruitment advice or even just uh, a chat. So there's the CV links. And don't forget, we have our session tomorrow as well, where uh, Robert will be joining me again, and we'll we'll be looking at how to market yourself in this world. So we'll go into uh, a little bit more detail about LinkedIn um, and and CV. So make sure you you join us tomorrow. Uh, so, so with that, I'd just like to say that uh, thanks very much, Robert, and to everyone uh, else. I hope you enjoy the rest of the uh, program here on Planet IMEX. Um, don't forget that all of these sessions are recorded, so you can um, watch them on demand for the rest of the week and next week on planetimex.com. Uh, but for now, thanks very much, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.